And that was your closing bell on Wall Street. Not much to clap about. And you see the numbers. It was a rough way to start the week. Let's bring on our market panel and talk about it. Kevin Nicholson, Riverfront Investment Group, Global Fixed Income CIO, and Anwi Bahuguna, Columbia Threadneedle Investments, Senior Portfolio Manager and Head of Multi-Asset Strategy. Glad you're both be, uh, here today on a rough start to the week. Kevin, what are the markets reacting to? The markets are reacting to, A, the well, the dovish Fed last week and the fact that the Fed hiked, but they took 75 basis points off the table. And so for in our view, that means that the Fed is going to have to do more later down the road. And that that puts them even further behind on the inflation front. Also, the market is reacting to a uh, non-farm payroll number that showed that the Fed is going to continue to hike, and it hasn't thrown the Fed off its path. And so I think today you're starting to see a bit of a capitulation um, to the realization that uh, the Fed is going to continue its mar march to uh, fight inflation, and therefore we're going to see some more downward pressure on equities. And we do. What do you think this means for equities? Is this volatility that we've seen most recently? Is that here to stay? Yes, indeed. I think in the short term, the volatility is likely to continue. Um, by the way, thank thank you for having me. Wanted to say that um, we need some more clarity from real data. So far, markets going on a vacuum of information on inflation, and it's just focusing on worries about inflation. So we are worried about what happens with the lockdown in China and supply chains and the ongoing war and impact it has on commodity prices. In the meantime, in the absence of any new data on inflation, what we are focused on is just the lack of this information. And we continue to see relentless selling, as you mentioned, over the last few days, uh, pricing in a lot of these worries. But we have an inflation print on Wednesday, and we are looking for some moderation in that number. And that might be a point uh, that markets focus on this, way, this, this week and stabilize. So then, Kevin, talk about some of the questions that your fixed income clients are, are heading your way. What are they most worried about? I think most of my clients are worried about whether or not the fixed income portion of the portfolio will ever actually hedge the equity portion again. Because what we've seen thus far this year is that you've had greater price depreciation than you've had uh, annual income generation. And so that has given you negative returns in, the, uh, in a balanced portfolio. So what my clients want to know is whether or not it's uh, – the right time to step into fixed income, and at what part of the curve should they be on uh, if they do enter fixed income uh, markets at this point? On WT, the Dow down 11 percent, the S&P 16 percent, the Nasdaq down 25 percent year to date. Where exists the opportunity in all the losses? So, Dave, that's an excellent question, and I think I want to sort of piggyback on something Kevin just said. Um, we are in balanced portfolio, which is what we manage in multi-asset portfolios, we've seen a lot of pain on both the equity side and the bond side. So as of last month, we actually increased our fixed income allocation because we think a lot of the uh, Fed's pricing on interest rate side is very much reflected in the fixed income market. So we increased duration and added to fixed income in our uh, balanced portfolios. I think commodities continue to be a hedge for inflation worries if they are to continue beyond um, the next few weeks. And uh, really until last month, bonds were not a good hedge, but at the levels of rates that we are seeing them now, they are providing hedge on a day like today when markets are now worrying, as Kevin mentioned, that maybe inflation will lead to a growth slowdown. And that's what we are seeing today. We've seen a bond rally after a really long time. And that's a decent thing to hold in portfolio when you have growth worries. Kevin, when we talk about growth worries, the possibility here of a slowdown, I guess, how big of a drop or how big of a 
uh, slow down? Could we potentially see at least in the short term? I think in the short term, we can see the S&P get down to uh, the 38, 3700 uh, levels. Um, one of the things that is concerning for us right now is that we're starting to see the trend uh, actually decelerate the 200 day moving average. Um, we follow uh, from a tactical side um, standpoint at our firm, we follow three important rules of don't fight the Fed, don't fight the trend and beware of the crowded extremes. And right now, two out of those three rules are being violated. I mean, the trend is turning negative, uh, and uh, we've been fighting the Fed because the Fed is uh, against, is not on investor sides right now. So that is um, creating the bearish uh, sentiment for us right now uh, in, in the markets. And on Mitya, I want to ask you about strategy because obviously, just because the stock is cheap, doesn't necessarily mean it's a good buy. So in terms of the strategy that you're using to determine where is a good place for investors to put their money, what, what strategy or formula are you using? Yes, no, that's an excellent question. I mean, not everything cheap is, uh, is fully discounting what's happening in the markets. But I think, as I mentioned, we think the rates market is fully discounting the Fed action. Similarly, parts of the equity market have actually gone way beyond what the growth worries might be. Uh, one of the areas we like within equities, we continue to have a barbell of a defensive US equity allocation, along with liking emerging markets, where I think a lot was priced in, not just this year, but even last year or so. So at this point, we, we are adding to emerging markets, we are adding to S&P 500. And Kevin, whether it be the, the sell-off we're seeing or the CPI number that we'll get later this week that Anwidi referenced, uh, could anything change the calculus of the Fed? I think that the thing that could change the calculus of the Fed is if they, between now and their next meeting, uh, there's going to be two opportunities to see uh, inflation prints. And so if the if we see a deceleration in those two CPI prints, then I think that that may help to change a little bit of the hawkishness of the Fed uh, at this juncture. But you know, right now, I just don't see that happening just because of the fact that you still have China locked down. The thing that we must remember is that the Fed can control the demand side of the curve, but they cannot control the supply side. And that's the part that we really need to get going so that we can uh, get rid of these supply chain bottlenecks and actually try to bring prices down that way. Because the supply side of the equation is what's really driving inflation at this juncture. And right, thanks to Kevin Nicholson, Riverfront Investment Group's Global Fixed Income Chief Investment Officer, and Anwiti Bahuguna, Columbia Threadneedle Investment Senior Portfolio Manager and Head of Multi-Asset Strategy.